As a matter of fact, um, some of us had, we had, we had an earthly father that was so distracted and despondent that you can hardly even picture yourself crying out to a God you can't see because the one you could see never gave you his ear. And so what you do is you take his face and you put it on the heavenly father. And as a result, you never cry out to him. I love this, that, that this man comes and kneels before him and Jesus's response is to get up and go pray for this little girl. Don't you love that we serve a God that sees us in our deepest need and wants to respond to our greatest need? Is anybody thankful for that in here today? So they get going on the journey. Just then, it says, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. Now, this is a polite way of saying that she had an uncontrollable menstrual flow. She wasn't only sick, but she was likely in a ton of pain and unlikely to ever have children. Now, that what we need to know here for context in Leviticus chapter 15 we learn that women who struggled in this manner were deemed ceremonially unclean. Now, for most of us in this room, we're thinking, what in the world does that mean? Should I even care about that? Again, we're trying to get greater context to the desperation here. This meant when you were ceremonially unclean that you could not touch anybody because they would become unclean. So oftentimes, Whoever was pronounced ceremonially unclean would find themselves in isolation, would find themselves in lonely situations. Can you imagine the hopelessness and the helplessness that this woman must, must have felt? She wasn't even allowed to go into the synagogues for worship. And certainly, in most cases, you would never find her in a big crowd like this. She's been struggling with this particular sickness for 12 years. That means that she probably hasn't experienced a hug in 12 years. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the hopelessness that she must have felt? Now, in Mark's account, I think this is important information for us to understand. It says that she suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all that she had. And, and instead of getting better, she got worse. This situation had become her identity. I mean, she isn't even given a name. She's labeled as the woman who had suffered for 12 years with bleeding. Can you imagine this? You see the contrast here of these two individuals and how both of them find themselves in desperate situations. Very different upbrings, very different circumstances. Jairus is a name everybody knows. She has a name nobody knows. He's wealthy, she is poor. He's got a daughter who is 12 years old and sick. She's been sick for 12 years. He is the leader of the synagogue. She's not allowed in a synagogue. He was respected, she was rejected. This brings to surface something that we all need to know. We just talked about it. We all have a need for Jesus. 